Cheers. Thank you, last Kian Corla. Uh, could the Minister outline uh, uh, what he and his departmental officials and staff from the Reception Integration Agency are doing to prevent the displacement of 248 adults and children uh, from the Towers Hotel Direct Provision Centre in Clondalkin, which is uh, uh, due imminently as a result of the withdrawal of the contract as of the 3rd of December? Two minutes, Minister. My department was informed by the contractor for the centre by letter received on the 3rd of October 2018 that. Uh, they would not be seeking to renew a contract which expires in December. Uh, my department and the contractor have had a number of discussions over recent days, but unfortunately it has not been possible to agree an extension of the contract that would comply with public procurement regulations. The welfare of the residents was at the centre of those discussions, and I can assure the Deputy that the Reception and Integration Agency are acutely aware of the hardship for residents for potentially having to move centre before Christmas. Residents at the centre will, were all formally informed by personal letter delivered last Friday morning, the 12th of October, that it did not prove possible to secure an extension of the contract to the 3rd of June 2019, but that unfortunately the centre would close when the contract comes, comes to an end on the 3rd of December next. As part of a wider scheme to seek additional accommodation for those in the international protection process, my department Abbott has a public procurement competition for premises within 40 kilometres of Newbridge on the 16th of September last. The contractors may submit the accommodation centre in question to this competition if they choose to do so. In light of these recent developments, I have arranged to extend the closing date of that competition competitive process to the 31st of October 2018. I hope this will enable interested contractors to submit premises to this tender process. Notwithstanding this, we will continue to work with the residents of the Towers who are still in the protection process in order to identify alternative accommodation within which within the uh, portfolio of my department and the department has commenced the process of identifying additional capacity both by way of the public procurement competition of reference to and an ad placed in the national press seeking expressions of interest in providing accommodation on an emergency basis for persons in the protection process. My aim is to limit to the greatest extent possible the disruption to families and to residents relying on Dublin-based services and, and we are examining with this, whether this object can be strengthened in contracts. The area is working on contingency plans to facilitate school-going children and Many deputies from the constituent, Deputy Fitzgerald and others, have been in contact with that. To, 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 these children are currently being in the centre in question to continue their current schools for the current school year. While the area is very constrained by the current demands and its accommodation and by the absence of bed capacity within its system. Considerable work has been done to support residents with status to move out of the accommodation centres and to provide permanent accommodation. I have also been in contact with the Minister for Housing uh, on the implications of this and the wider issues of our own providing accommodation for persons who have been granted, as the Deputy has said, permission to remain in Ireland. These discussions are ongoing. And we also provide funding to NGOs on accommodation issues affecting those who have been granted permission to remain, including the approximately 60 such persons affected in this instance. Good morning, uh, thanks for observing the time. Uh, Thank you. Brink. Uh, thanks, Minister. And first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, the work that the Minister is doing in this regard and, and the fact that he's made himself available to, to those of us uh, who are local constituency TEDs to discuss the matter. Uh, at the outset, I just want to say the men, women and children who live in the Clondalk and Towers Direct Provision Centre are part of our community. Uh, uh, they uh, go to local schools, they use local doctors, they use local support services. Uh, many of them are in uh, third level uh, education. Uh, and the view of the local community is we want them to stay. Uh, we don't want them to be flung uh, to the far corners uh, of the country if that uh, is an eventuality. Uh, and I suppose we're concerned that at this very late stage, uh, the possibility of very, very substantial uh, uh, disruption to the lives and well-being of the families, first of all those that are still in the process uh, and those with uh, leave to remain. So can you confirm a number of things to us, Minister? First of all, I understand that RIA and Faziar, the company with the contract, are still in contact. Can you let us know if that is the case and if an extension of the contract is still possible? I also understand that RIA wrote, as I contacted uh, the manager of the centre last night at 7 o'clock, asking for families to be available for a meeting at 3 o'clock today, which seems to me very short notice. Can you confirm that RIA will go back in and give more adequate notice to families to assist them in terms of the difficult situation that they're facing? One minute, one minute. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, I just want to point out that funding was, uh, was granted also to the Jesuit Refugee S Service and the Peter McVerry Trust uh, under the Asylum Migration Integration Fund Ireland for the PATS project. That's providing asylum seekers in transition with housing and support. In addition, funding has also been granted to South Dublin County Council for a two-year housing integration programme. A key part of is, is to assist residents who have received permission to remain to assess housing supports. And officials have been also been liaising with South Dublin County Council in relation to a particular situation arising in Clondalk. And so we have everything that's possible is being done here. And I also want to acknowledge the support of, of uh, deputies in the constituents in the con and the constructive uh, way that deputies have gone about this in trying to support this. With regard to the contract, as I said, we, we have actually extended the, um, the procurement date uh, to the 31st of, um, of October next. And I'm hoping that other 
contractors will come forward. Indeed, it's open to the present contractor to do so if, if he wishes as well. Um, and uh, can I say that the people working in RIA, who work very closely with the asylum seekers, uh, are particularly upset about this and are going above and beyond the call of duty to assist and help the people. And I will take back uh, the, the question that the Deputy has, has brought to my attention with respect to notice. But can I say that every effort is being made to assist and support the people in, 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 um, that are affected? Can I get a final question? Uh, thank you, Minister. And again, I want to acknowledge the role that you played in securing that funding both for uh, the accommodation worker in, in the towers as well as the intercultural centre. But I would like to press you. My understanding is that there are still contacts between RIA and the current contractor to try and resolve or at least secure an extension to the current contract. Can you comment on that? Is it possible, uh, just so I'm clear, for that contract to be extended if some other party tenders uh, for the longer term direct provision contract and is successful in that? And also just on RIA, and I'm not criticising any departmental staff, but the families who are living in, in Clondalkin Towers at the moment are very, very frightened and very unsure of the future. And giving them a late night notice of an afternoon meeting the following day, I, I don't think is acceptable. I would like to see RIA in there on a number of days, both in the afternoons and the evenings, to work with those families uh, to ensure that they have the full information. Uh, and also I would like to you to continue to work both with uh, Minister Owen Murphy uh, and the local authority to ensure the 68 adults and children who have status and could imminently be facing homelessness get every additional support above and beyond the existing accommodation workers uh, to get them into private rental accommodation. Thanks very much. As I said, I have been in contact with the Minister for Housing on this, and, and he's, he, he and his people are very, very aware of this and are also assisting where, where they can. But there is a public procurement process currently underway, um, covering the area within which the premises is, is located. It's, it is a matter for any contractor, including the contractor involved, to make a submission in response to that procurement. And by the same token, it would be completely inappropriate for me to intervene in any way with that process, as, as you can understand. The contractor, Alaskan Hall, in this instance, sought a longer term extension that, would be com com that uh, then would be compliant with procurement uh, law and rules. Uh, uh, we couldn't breach procurement law by agreeing to this request. RIA sought a short term extension to the contract next June um, to allow for a structured orderly exit from the centre, taking schooling, etc., into account. This was not acceptable to the contractor. But again, we remain open. And, and RIA remains open to any, um, any approach from the contractor or any suggestions, and, and that door is not closed by any means. Um, and again, as I said, every effort is being made to support the residents in every way possible, those that have status and those without status. But I, I, again, as everyone knows, um, RIA is under a, a fair amount of pressure with regard to accommodation at the moment across all its portfolio. So it is a huge challenge, but I can assure the House that every effort is being made to support those people. In the, in, and, and again, I want to thank deputies for their support and constructive engagement on this matter. Thank oh